one of these days I'm going to spill that. Anyway, here we go on this cold Winnipeg winter morning. And uh, I did come back to the model table last night. And we got ourselves on step two. We didn't glue anything together yet. Uh, let's roll back so you can see how we got to where we are. And uh, just a bit of a fair warning here, this entire episode may not be about the model ship, which right now is the Rodney. Anyway, here we go. Okay, as you can see, I have not really done a whole lot this evening since we uh, ended up episode 1073. Um, now, I did read all my comments, though, at least uh, up until right now. And uh, first of all, one of the viewers mentioned that on the bottom of this deck, I'll, I'll move in so that you can read it, but it says Nelson on it. And then uh, one, one of the other viewers, I think it was uh, Ian, uh, said that uh, he has the 1-200 scale Nelson. And uh, he was confirming that the, some of the holes were in, in different pla different holes, in other words. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move in and then we'll, we'll talk about that. Now, the last time I tried to get on Trumpeter's website to see which one of these kits they put out first, was, was it the Nelson or was it the Rodney? I think we have to conclude that they originally made the Nelson first, the Nelson kit, that is, and then afterwards realized that with very little modification, they can turn it into a Rodney. So I think that's what's happened here, because uh, clearly this is Nelson. Now I know it's upside down, but I'm sure you can read it. Anyway, that's, that's really interesting, but you know, it makes me wonder, is there that sort of thing going on with the... Uh, now, not that I mind. It, I don't mind if they're, if they're basically the same. Uh, just a di different superstructure to a certain degree. But I'm wondering, is it possible that the Iowa and the Missouri have the same sort of thing going on? Maybe they share a common hull. They might even share a common deck like this. I don't know. And it doesn't really matter. I'm sure that whichever one we end up getting, uh, you know, um, I'm going to be happy with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. If, if I get that far. Okay, now for what I really wanted to do here this evening was get started on step two. We've got our nine holes drilled out where we're supposed to. And that brings to mind, one of the viewers says, what made you think that you had to drill out more than nine holes? And I replied back, well, I'm not the brightest light bulb in the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I thought that, but I did. Anyway, step two. All right, so right, right off the bat we got photo etch, but it looks like it might be the kind of e photo etch that's easy to put on. Um, yeah, step two. Well, there's a lot, a lot in step two. Uh, make four of these. Well, well, these will be fairly easy, except for the photo etch. But we'll we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Uh, Oh my goodness, it looks like the, uh, well, I'll, I'll zoom in here. Okay, this is plastic, this is plastic, and the base will be plastic. But the little cradle thing is photo etch. Now I hope this is heavy duty photo etch, otherwise this is going to be very, very fragile. But I think you, you would think that by now I'd have enough practice, right? Uh, oh, and then there's a couple of photo etch pieces that have, or no, one photo etch piece has to go on the side. Um, it looks like just one side. Anyway, we have to make up four of these. You know, I should maybe be unpacking the sprue boxes and uh, cutting open the bags. Uh, it seems to me we may have the bags already cut open. Um, I'm going to look at that this evening. Mm. 
Now, I had honestly forgotten that I had already opened these bags and, and labeled them. I, I guess in order to uh, show, show a good job or do a good job of showing the sprues, um, you know, I, I don't think, in fact, I know for a fact, I, I did not watch the uh, the video of the box opening of the Rodney, so I've sort of forgotten what I did and what I didn't do. S some of you are going to know better than I do, and I'm the one that took the video. Uh, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm noticing here that I haven't put my drill bits back in the index. Uh, I think maybe I should do that. I'm, I'm kind of anxious to, to get going, you know, I, w I want to start nipping some parts and you know, I'm, I'm a little bit excited about this. Uh, I'm even kind of excited about the photo X, but in sort of a apprehensive way. So, uh, yeah, just let me reorganize here. Uh, I don't know uh, if we're going to actually put any parts together this evening. Probably not. It's already uh, 8.16. And, uh, yeah. Just give me a few minutes here. Now we are not going to be needing the deck. I think it's uh, step 11 before we actually need the deck. So uh, I think what we should do is put it in its back in its box here and uh, try and keep it a little bit safe because when we get to step 11 I can well imagine that it will be at the place where I can open the windows and uh, for spraying. I think I'm probably going to spray it. I know I know that there was the thought that we would be uh, maybe possibly painting this entire ship by hand just for the fun of it, but I've given that some some thought and I realized that there are certain things like the hull and the deck and and so on that are just really big. And uh, I don't know. Well, you know what? We'll see what happens when we actually get there. In, in the meantime, we'll put this on the other side of the table. And if you were watching the the hood getting put in the case, you know what it looks like over there. So, <laughs> in other words, it's a mess. Okay, we are slowly getting organized here. And... Uh, Right at the beginning, we need uh, the G sprue and the and the uh, H sprue. Okay. Now there are six G sprues. There's two in each one of these packages. There are two H sprues. We also need a little piece when we get over here. It's on the F sprue. As far as I can see, that's all we need on the F sprue, and we don't need any anything different than than H and G until we get right down at the bottom, which is definitely not going to be tonight <laughs> or tomorrow. Um, yeah, so uh, I think I'm going to call it quits for this evening, folks. And uh, we'll go at this again in the morning. So, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And here's what's happened. Uh, I've had a, you might say, a slight disappointment that involves my new uh, Z9 here. Now, uh, it, the problem is not with the Z9. The problem is that, well, to, to, to make the Z9 work with the, my older lenses, of which this is one, I need an adapter, and we've, I think we've talked about that. And uh, yeah, it's called the FTZ2 adapter. Now the difference between the 1 and the 2 is that the 2 is more round. <laughs> as far as I know, that's the only difference. Anyway, here's what's happened. When I, all the other lenses that I have, my, my older lenses, like, like the, the macro lens, I put the adapter on, it works just fine. 
However, I tried this one the other day. You, you'll remember that I was talking about in, in the summertime or in the springtime, I wanted to, you know, go out and maybe try and take some bird pictures. <laughs> well, this was the lens I was thinking of using. And I haven't used it for quite a while. It works absolutely perfectly with my uh, 850, but it will not work with this adapter, this camera and this adapter. What happens is you turn it, if you turn it on, right now I've got it uh, looking out the window there. It says error, press shutter release button to reset. Okay, so I, I get to sort of see out there, but I, I cannot adjust the f-stop at all. Uh, I can change the shutter speed, but when I go to adjust the f-stop, well, now it's making a liar out of me, it's working, but uh, uh, eventually I'll get, I'll get an error message. So I'm, I'm con I contacted, there we go, error, press shutter release button to reset. Now, oh, you can't see that, sorry. <laughs> okay, now you can see it. Uh, yeah, I guess I should keep an eye on the monitor. <clears throat> no, not not this monitor. There's there's another one over there. <laughs> and it's, I'm using the uh, surveillance camera monitor and, uh, for the other camera here. Anyway, uh, more information than you need. So I, I get this error message. May as well turn it off here. So I sent off a, an email to Nikon's help department. What do I do? Well, their idea of help was, say, contact Tamron, because it's it's not a Nikon lens, it's a Tamron lens. And uh, so I did. I contacted Tamron and told them the problem. They shot back an email right away, said, no problem. You can either send your lens in and we'll change the firmware, or you can buy an adapter and do it yourself. Well, I concluded that the $80 they wanted to upgrade this lens plus shipping uh, was going to cost as much as or almost as much as buying the adapter myself, which I have bought here. Now, I, I, have, not see, I have not seen it yet. Uh, I know what it looks like because I did go online and watch other people using theirs. So I kind of have an idea of how, how it's supposed to work. Okay, Tamron for Nikon. It comes, uh, I believe it comes for for Sony, Canon, and Nikon. Or maybe it's just Canon and Nikon, I'm not sure. And anyway, uh, so what you do is you take this and you put it on the back of your lens. And... Uh, Then you plug plug this in, plug your cord in, and then you plug the other end into a USB out on your computer. Now I do have to download some software apparently. I think I think it might be a real good idea if I read the instructions. And uh, yeah, I think what I should do is read the instructions, download the software, see if we can make the change, and then find out if this if it's going to work. Now, remember at the beginning of this episode, I said that today might not be 100% about the model ship or something to that effect. Uh, well, this is going to be part of it. Now, I think we, it's only, what, 1036? I think we probably will be able to uh, make at least one uh, part out of the beginning of step number two. Uh, anyway. Okay, here is what's happened. Besides, a lot of time has passed. I downloaded the software onto my computer. 
I attach this to the back of the lens, uh, ran the software, followed the instructions, and uh, I haven't tried it yet. As far as I know, I did everything right. As far as I know. Okay, now you're going to see it along with me for the first time. I wonder if I can move this screen out so that you can see it and the camera can still look out the window. It's supposed to tilt sideways as well. Well, it's okay. I'll, I'll bring you around once we find out if it works or not. Now this is going to be the first time. Now, is it going to work? Uh-oh, error. Press shutter release button to reset. That's not a good sign. Now, I just want to interrupt here. I think the reason we got an error message was because this was the first time we turned the camera on since we'd had a problem. And it's possible the camera still remembered, hey, with this lens I, I don't work too good. So it uh, gave me the error message because after I got through with this segment, I uh, tested the lens out extensively. Uh, and everything worked every time um, uh, we never did try the uh, uh, vibration uh, like the uh, stability and stuff like that uh, but I did later and it worked perfectly everything is working perfectly I just want to emphasize that uh, yeah I don't know what was going on with that error message but anyway it never happened again yeah you know what I think it's working I think it's working Let's uh, let's uh, bring the camera around here so that you can see the back. Okay, I've snapped a couple of pictures here so that you can see the way I've got it set up. And as long as I don't uh, move anything here with my big clumsy fingers while I'm turning in stuff on and adjusting, this should work. Okay, here we go. All right. Now this is good. You can see the shutter speed is at 1 60th of a second. It's still in movie mode. Maybe I'll take it and move it over to picture taking mode. The uh, aspect ratio is different. Now we should be able to s slow our shutter speed down. Yeah, now we can go slower than a 60th of a second. We, we couldn't before because uh, well, we were shooting at 60 frames a second, so you can't go slower than a 60th of a second if you're shooting at 60 frames a second. You can go faster. In fact, you can go up to, this camera will go up to 1 32 thousandths of a second, even in video mode, which I plan on trying out. Uh, all right, now we, we've got, uh, it, it's pretty blurry there. Let's see if we can... Uh, focus on the bricks uh, on the neighbor's house across the street. Now I press the autofocus here. Yeah. So the autofocus is working. Now the I believe that 7.1 is the most I can open this lens up to. Let's just try the aperture setting here. Oh, that's the <laughs> wrong button. Okay. Yeah, 7.1 is is as wide open as I can go, but I can I can uh, stop it down, which will greatly increase the depth of field. And uh, you notice the ISO jump there. Now we we can compensate for the fact that it got a little bit darker, but you should notice that the mirror on my camera is actually sh or, or the mirror on my on my car is actually a little bit more in focus right now whereas when I start to open the lens up the mirror gets blurry but the the bricks on the neighbor's house across the street will not change okay so this is it's working now so that's that's fantastic um, 
Okay, because okay, right there. That's that's normal. Okay. Uh, yeah. You notice before, it, even though the f stop was was getting more and more open, the ISO was it was getting brighter and brighter and more and more overexposed. That's because the ISO was already as uh, uh, as low as it will go. It's 64 is as low as it will go. So. To, to compensate for for the fact that the I wanted to shoot at f 7.1 I would have to increase the shutter speed I'll go increase it and we'll get it to where the ISO starts to change there it's jumped up to 80 yeah okay so we're at, we're shooting now at a four hundredth of a second at f 7.1 ISO 64 now if I was to uh, Take a picture. It should be it should be pretty good. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to do it, and then we'll we'll look at it later. So here we go. Okay, as near as I can tell, I've taken a picture. Let's just push the uh, the button to to look at it and see if we've we've actually taken it. Where's where is it? This camera is different from my other one. Okay, that, that, that's probably the picture we took. Yeah, that's the picture we took because I'm moving the camera, but the picture isn't changing. Okay, enough. Let's get on with the model. My goodness, this isn't a photography class. Okay, let's get to some uh, model ship building here, or Jim Steen is going to be kicking me out of his model ship. Facebook group here because I'm not really model shipping. I'm doing all kinds of other crazy things here. Now, uh, right at the beginning, we need H13 and 14 and 37. Okay, well, I know that this is 13 and 14 and 37s pretty easy to spot because they look like this. Now we need to make four. Now there's two on this sprue and there's uh, two on this one over here. Let's uh, reposition a little bit here. Well this is the first one. We'll be trimming them off afterwards. And these ones here, I don't want to cut too close. I want to cut way back. If I turn it over, I can get closer to the to the sprue, and we'll trim later. Okay, now what was the other one? We need the 37s. Move those over there. And 37. Once again on the 37, I'll, I'll turn it here so that you can see. We don't want to be nipping close to the edge of that thinking to ourselves, so then I don't have less to trim off because there's a little button or something on the well, probably was bigger than a button, but you know what I mean, I want to tr cut well back and we'll trim that off later. Same thing right here, you can see there's a little doohinky that we don't want to accidentally nip off. Okay, now just do that again on the other sprue and I'll do it off camera. Okay, I knew that you would like to be, along with me, the first to hear the tin drop for the Rodney. Now, I wonder which one will be the last one. And when will it be? Anyway. And now for the part we've all been waiting for. Yeah, the photo etch. I guess I maybe should take the uh, plastic off of here. At least off of one side. 
And when I take it off, I usually take it off of the side that has the uh, the letters and the numbers. Okay, we leave the we leave the other side on because uh, gives these delicate parts support. Um, okay, so we need uh, C15. Okay, well, it's obviously these right here. They're quite clear. Okay, let's recompose here and nip some photo etch. Now, I'm guessing about five minutes ago I was noticing somebody coming to my door. So I went to the door and I was embarrassed at how, how bad the snow was around my steps there. I didn't realize it was so bad. I haven't been out today yet. So I better uh, cut this episode short here and get out there and shovel snow. I do believe that's going to have to be it for this afternoon, folks. And uh, I cheated. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.